Hello, and welcome back to my small part of the universe. My name is Hailstone. Today, we are covering a interesting twin instance, a very vibrant dynamic duo, the Tiger Thresher and the Bone Thresher. Now please, sit back, relax, as these two turn your submarine into Swiss cheese. The Bone Thresher and the Tiger Thresher, truly the dynamic duo of the European biosphere. This duo of species are well known to submarine crews, though at first one may only see the approaching swarm of lights that are a key feature of the Tiger Thresher, only then to be taken by surprise as the much larger Bone Threshers lurch out of the inky black and tears apart the outer hull of a submarine. And while the Bone Thresher itself is far too bulky to enter the submarine, the Tiger Threshers are not. And once the opportunity presents itself, the Threshers will swarm inside the sub, tearing apart and dragging out crew members to a fate of drowning and being ripped apart by other Threshers. Anatomy of the Threshers Needless to say, the two Threshers couldn't be more different from each other. In just size alone, the Tiger Threshers sit at about three times the length of an average human male, sitting roughly around 15 feet, with the Bone Thresher nearly tripling that length by 50 feet long. At first, one may think that these two may be some form of dimorphism between males and females of the species, like that of the Earth Anglerfish. But while the body plans are similar, the features are so different it might indicate completely separate species instead. Starting with the larger of the two, the Bone Thresher is the better armored of the duo, owing its namesake to the large bony plates that cover its body, which are strewn across with bluish, white, or yellowish coloration. Along its spine are eight or so spike-like growths with knobbed ends. Towards the front underside of the Thresher sit a pair of small fins and three downward-facing spikes. These fins and spike sets are found on both the Bone and Tiger Threshers, and there are a number of ways these innocuous spines on the underside may be used. They may contain some form of venom-like defense that stabs a predator when grabbed from below, or it may act as a type of grip to hold onto the sides of rocks to resist the heavy currents of the Europa an ocean, which if true, their ear-like bodies would easily allow the water to pass by relatively uninterrupted, or it simply may be some form of vestigial fin that has been long unused. The head of the Bone Thresher is long and broad, sporting a powerful jaw capable of shearing off large parts of a submarine's hull, and able to nearly kill a human in a single swipe. Despite having no eyes, the Thresher is capable of reacting to light sources, often pursuing flares when used as a distraction, much like the Mudraptor. Though unlike the Mudraptor, the Bone Thresher doesn't even have a hint of vestigial eyes from long ago. Though, what it may have is a collection of photoreceptors in the small, whisker-like protrusions found just below its nose. And while perhaps they cannot see in the light like humans, they can sense that it is there and in a certain direction, and may even use this sense to coordinate efforts with the smaller tiger threshers. Unlike their bigger cousins, tiger threshers are not nearly as well armored and can be easily dispatched with most standard munitions. Though, in lieu of this, they also come in higher numbers. What makes the Tiger Thresher really stand out are its tiger-like stripes along its body and its bioluminescent head and tail. Unlike the Bone Thresher, the head of the Tiger Thresher is shorter and curves downward. The skin covering the top is transparent to a certain degree. Within the head, two large, dark circular organs are visible, probably serving as the Tiger Thresher's eyes. Around the edges of the upper jaw is a collection of crystals or some form of large unicellular creatures that seem to be supplying the chemical reactions that allow the Tiger Thresher's head and tail to glow. And while not as prominent as the head, the tail seems to contain some of the same material, or at least something similar only in a smaller form, somewhat resembling mineral-like granules. Life Cycle of the Bone and Tiger Threshers Like many smaller fauna of Europa, Tiger Threshers make their home in caves in order to shelter their young from Europa's harsh environment. Often these nests can be quite large, housing a large number of Tiger Thresher guardians and up to a cluster of seven eggs. 
making clearing out such nests quite dangerous, even for the most prepared crews. Unlike tiger thrushers, bone thrusher eggs, let alone nests, have never been encountered, meaning they often breed in deep parts of the abyss, or simply carry the eggs inside them until they're ready to hatch, very akin to how sharks on Earth birth their young. Thresher Cooperation Thresher swarms are well known to come with at least one bone thresher and five or more tire threshers, but why don't these separate species eat each other like most of the other fauna on Europa? This could be due to over the course of their evolution. These creatures have effectively avoided predation on one another and became hunting partners instead, with the Bone Thresher taking on the effective role of the first strike on large targets like that of the Moloch, while the smaller Tiger Threshers rush in tearing at the soft and vital organ tissue, causing massive eternal damage, providing the Tiger Threshers with a bodyguard and the Bone Thresher with an easy meal. Though, how do these species communicate so well during an attack? It is quite likely that this is due to the evolution of two important features that the Threshers have evolved. The light-sensing whiskers of the Bone Thresher and the bioluminescence of the Tiger Thresher. As while the Bone Thresher can't see, the Tiger Thresher can. And when prey is spotted, the Tiger Threshers will guide in the Bone Threshers with perhaps different variations of light level to a certain degree similar to how Humboldt squids communicate while hunting, by rapidly changing the colors of their bodies from red to white. Which, in effect, seems to be the only reason that Tiger Threshers have evolved the ability to glow at all, which is to guide in the larger Bone Thresher due to its lack of sight and use its strength to both of their advantages. Threshers have been the bane of many a submarine's crew, even more so than other fauna, but there was nothing more horrifying than when I was working as an engineer on an older Typhoon model. A group of Threshers had quickly dispatched our poorly equipped security force as we had wasted our munitions in an alien ruins on a group of Fractal Guardians. They had easily torn in through the top and it was just me and a fellow from the 23 Jesters for the Hawk Mother Union. Everyone else was tied up and getting the lower level staple. I had on my personal puck suit, and the clown just did his thing, ignoring the waters of Europa. The moment the fella stepped into the area just below the suit lockers, I kid you not, a thresher popped in from above and just grabbed him. And then, in a blink of an eye, it just slithered right out of the sub into the inky brine, with a dim honking following in its wake. And to this day, I don't know if it was him crying out for help, or if it was him accepting his horrid fate. Honestly, with clowns, it's really hard to tell. I tried to go after him with a crowbar, but the swarm was too thick on the captain. This was the captain that didn't approve of clowns. Ordered us to consider him a lost cause. Honestly, it was quite the traumatic experience. Well, needless to say, the clown showed back up at the next station, and when I asked how he had gotten away, I just got a simple honk in response. After that, things just kind of went back to normal. Though, I never really got an answer to that perplexing situation. Though, one day I could have sworn he muttered something about the Hawk Mother having plenty of others in cryo or something. Till one day he filed a complaint with CR, Clown Resources, apparently. I didn't even know there was one. There was official paperwork and everything, as well as something about the captain shooting him one too many times. After that, he simply bidded the rest of the crew farewell and just disappeared into the crowd at one of the stations we stopped at. Well, to say anything, he was memorable, at the very least. Rumors of Living Thresher Meat As a last note, a recipe has been circulating as of late, claiming how to properly prepare and cook thresher meat by an Aunt Doris, with parts of the recipe referring to things similar to this. Thresher pieces will try to escape the dish from time to time, and may work to overpower you if the dish is left uncovered. Despite the belief that this has spread about thresher meat being alive, I can't, nor can, confirm that they work together to do anything, though due to the recipe calling for opium and, god forbid, Moloch milk to be included in the dish, I think I can safely say this is probably more bunk than anything else. Thank you for listening to another one of my videos. 
I am currently in the process of creating a Discord for this community. I have heard what everyone has had to say, and I am deciding to make one, though it will take a little bit of time. I definitely appreciate everyone that has been subscribing as of late. We are, honestly, maybe within a few weeks, probably going to surpass a thousand subscribers, and I could not be more elated. Until next time, have an absolutely fantastic day on our once pale blue dot.